We deserve this. If there was like a championship to win in off season, I promise you we won it. Like, you know, I promise, I promise you we won it. That was probably the best. You know, not the best, but one of the best good mornings I've had to myself in a while. So it was good. Appreciate it. This means a lot. <laughs> we won December, I tell you that. Yeah, we're good. Tom, what did you like best about tonight? Our resiliency. You know, you get up, what was it, 20, 21 against a team like this. Um, you know, it's hard to keep them down. You know, they're going to continue to fight, especially with their loss they had in Memphis. Um, there's no way they just, you know, roll over, especially a team like this, especially setting a message, trying to send a session to an Eastern Conference opponent. Um, you know, so understanding that they're going to continue to go and, you know, Ev gets in foul trouble early. You know, we continue to fight. It's Kevin, it's J.A., it's all of us. You can't really guard Giannis with just one person. Um, we force him into some tough ones. But at the end of the day, you know, he had 45, but, you know, we, we, we won and we made it tough. And we did a lot of really solid things on the offensive end uh they had was it 106 points um you know outside of a few threes at the end you know we we almost held another team like this to under 100 points um or to 100 points you know that's something to look back on and offensively man it's just it's just a group effort you know it's continuously a group effort doing different things and you know we 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 looked really good. We got some things we can clean up, uh, and that's natural. But when you go against a team that's been together this long, um, after the two games that we had over there, to become here and protect home court, that's big time. Kelsey. Kelsey, Rosalia, I thought I, JB talked about the poise that you guys have uh, throughout the game. How have you seen that grow throughout the season, and how is this just a really good example of that poise? I think it's night and day. You know, I think you look at the first two games we played, um, they set the tone in the second half, and I think we were able to to do that this game. You know, um, I think whether it was on the shots weren't falling or we we getting stops. You know, shots are falling and we're continuously getting stops. And we gave up some some different looks. You know, but at the end of the day, how do you respond? They cut it to eight, cut it to nine or eight. You know, we responded right back to put it up to eighteen. Um, like that's that's. That's the testament of a, a team that wants to win and continue to grow. And now he's got to continuously do it and be consistent. And, you know, we look at nights like tonight, we'll see these games continuously. But when you get later in the season, you look at nights like this, like this and, you know, all right, this is what we can be. This is what, we, this is what we've done. You know, we've shown we can do it, and we just got to continue to be consistent. What are those, like, conversations in, like, especially the second half, I guess, when, they're, when they are going those runs, holding that poise, like, are you guys talking about that, or is it just kind of like a reminder of like, hey, we can't do this? Like, well, I think, yeah, I think having those first two, I would call them blowouts in the third, you know, I think those definitely help because, one, we have film to look at what we did wrong, you know, and personally for myself, I looked at, you know, the way I started the third, the second game, the second game, and... I gave up two defensive plays right away. It's five points. JB calls timeout, take a bad shot, and then it leads to another possession. You know, so for me personally, I wanted to come in and set the tone. And I think everybody in that locker room would say the same thing about themselves. You know, they had a personal moment where they can look at it in the third and say, you know, if I don't let him get middle, or if I don't get, if I get a box out, or if I cut harder. Um, and I think we all took that to heart. You know, I think we we all watch film, we all study the game, and you know, you see that in our efforts that were made today. Jeff, Jeff, she done this here. Um, you didn't have. Jared Allen in the first game in Milwaukee, and he got hurt mm -hmm. early in the second. So what difference did he make for you guys tonight? Um, well, I can start offensively because we all know defensively, but he 8 of 10, 19 and 8. You know, he's there being a being the pest, you know, sending the screens, rolling, getting down there, dunking on the roll. Um, but defensively, you know, when you got to deal with both Evan and J.A., it's tough. You know, it's tough to continuously throw all those bodies at you and to make plays. And to Giannis's credit, he... Still find a way to get 45, but J.A., you know, I think those two guys deserve um, high, high, high consideration for all defensive team. I know we haven't, uh, I know we have a ways to go for that, but I think, you know, you look at, especially J.A., um, you look at, you know, us when he's out and when he's when he's out there and when he's not playing, there's a big difference because he really holds the fort down for us. And, you know, we all know that we all appreciate that. And, you know, he's going to continuously make nights hard. And it also helps when you have Evan Mobley right next to you as well. So they they play really well together in that space. And we, you know, we feed off them defensively. We they get biased that go ahead and try them. And, you know, we got to have their backs. But Jay, is, Jay especially has really held the fort down, especially defensively. Dan. Danny Cunningham, ESPN Cleveland. Don, what makes Drew Holiday so difficult to play against? Man, you know, so many different things. You know, he physicality. You know, he's 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 right there. He's quick. He's he's agile. He's able to use his hands. You look at the steal he got on me in the fourth. You look at the steal he got on Darius in the fourth. Um, he got me in Utah. We played in Utah. 
um, on a double drag, double screen, I'm going right. And it does never get screened, you know, and I lost him. And he comes back on this side and gets a steal and picks it. I, I don't think anybody else in the league can, can probably do that. You know, he's he's a guy that, you know, I've had battles with him when he was in New Orleans since my, my career started. Um, and I'm familiar with him, and we continuously go at it. And, you know, I got the utmost respect for Drew's game because he's – I don't even want to call him underrated anymore because, like, I think that he's at a point where people know, you know, um, and I say people, not just NBA players, but you guys and, and fans. Um, but he's a guy that just, you know, on a nightly basis, you know what you're getting from him defensively and then offensively to have – Nine, eight, and nine. You know, contributing. You know, stuff that you know, I honestly thought it was a quiet nine, eight, and nine. But making those smart veteran plays, um, continuously finding ways to to impact the game. You know, he's a hell of a player. Spencer, Spencer Davies, basketballers.com. Uh, there's a moment there down the stretch where they cut it. I think to like eight or six. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was a defensive play that you made when I think it was Grayson Allen and Javon mm-hmm. Carter in the corner. Mm-hmm. You ran them both off the line, mm-hmm. and then you ended up getting the tie up. Mm-hmm. What goes through your mind when you have to defend two shooters like that yeah, and then make yeah. that play? Um, the biggest thing that hurts, it's it's like a dagger, especially at home, is when they hit those corner threes. Run them off the line and make a play. You know, and like I said, I, I don't make that play. My past years of my career, I think, you know, um, the play earlier where Drew Holiday made the Euro step on me was too easy, you know, and DG let me know it, like, you know, strap up, like, you know, and I think for me, like I said, I take pride in that, but having, you know, continuously being challenged by my teammates and by my coaches to make those plays, and, you know, if I give that up, you know, I, I, who knows what the result is, you know, it, it's a, it's a, it's a dagger of a shot so just trying to run guys off the line and just make a play um and you know not trying to let them get middle knowing grace enough play with grace and so knowing he wants to get back to that euro to the right hand and just made a play and then kind of a lighter note but you and drew going back to back with 40 foot bank oh shots God. have you ever done that before? <laughs> have you ever been in a game where that's happened? i knew it was going to happen because love and i started celebrating after i hit it in you the basketball guys they don't they don't like that too much like they don't you got to be able to play the full quarter you got to play it out and as the pass came i watched it and in my head i was like you should probably go for it and i was like no nah, he's not gonna make it and then he shot it and i was like this month mo- <laughs> sorry <laughs> I, was like, he might- I was like he might <laughs> he really might make this and then he made it i couldn't help but laugh like we <laughs> drew and i laughed at each other that was this is what happens when you celebrate too early. <laughs> that's that's ultimately what it is. It's kind of like when the the guy who was running the marathon started doing this, and then the guy ran right by him. <laughs> it's exactly the same thing. And then real quick, just uh, playing against Joe, seeing him on the floor. And yeah, after he all got he's me with through. that offensive foul. Oh, he does that to me in practice every day. Um, but it's so great to see Joe back. Um, so great to see him back out there, man. So I was obviously I was there when he had that catastrophic injury. You know, I've, we've been through a lot together, him and I. And you know, he's a big reason. You know, as much as I give Ricky credit, Joe's a big reason as to why I am who I am today. As far as a leader, my poise, understanding the game, understanding where to put people. Joe's been a big part of that. Um, I owe a lot to Joe. You know, and I'm appreciative of him. But it's so great to see him back. Um, you know, he's still getting back to his back to his stuff. But you know, it's it's great to see one of your guys. You know consider a brother you know you've been to war with him a thousand times and you know it's good to see him back out there all right evan and joji to wrap it up evan been all right down with donovan um to go off kelsey's question a little bit just the poise this team has and it's a young team but are you already seeing the guys just kind of growing up in real time mm-hmm. and like winning big games like this like you've beaten boston twice now in pretty spectacular fashion like you be even walking for the first time this season. Mm-hmm. Like, are you noticing just a little bit of growth and maturity for the rest of your teammates? I think you're seeing it in the – I see it, honestly, in the huddles. You know, we're always going to be laughing and happy. You see it in the locker room, the happy-go-lucky guys in the locker room and, and shoot-arounds. And you're seeing it with the approach in the game, you know. And the one thing – I'm not used to. I'm used to old, angry guys like Joe, uh, um, like in the mornings having to wake his kids up at 6 a.m. So these guys come in with a different energy, coming in light, you know. And and you know, it's not a bad thing, but you know, it's just for us to have that mindset. You see it in shoot around when we come in. You see the light, the energy, and then to come in and lock in. You know, the growth that has happened in just a matter of three months is incredible. Um, you know, especially when the lights are at its brightest, the pressure's at its brightest, big games. Um, and, you know, we can only get better. We can continuously get better. But I'm, like, like I said, like, we have a long way to go, but we've made a lot of progress, a lot more progress than I think anybody in this room, um, anybody's locker room thought we were making. That's a testament to our young guys. That's a testament to JB. It's a testament to everybody in this organization for believing in each other and holding each other accountable, you know, at the end of the day. And to being able to be happy, lucky, like keeping that joy because this is a long season. But then also when it's time, like, you know, like I said, DG was like, hey, you got to strap up. Like, you know, 
that conversation doesn't happen the first week, 10 day, ten games of the season, you know, but being able to grow into that. And I talked to him the other day um, just about having that. And he's holding guys accountable. Now it's Mar, now it's Isaac, now it's Evan. Now, like, going down the line, you know, it's, it's a testament to, to everybody in that locker room, and we can only get better. I know this one over at the free throw line, you kind of collect your thoughts and mm-hmm. let out. You exhale. Um, is it just like part of a ritual you have, or routine? Yeah, I put myself to the last place that I made five in a row. Like I put myself in that space. So typically at home, it's been shoot around or you know pregame. But I kind of put myself not in the arena. You know, kind of silence myself, and um, that's that's been that way pretty much my whole NBA career. Um, you know, in college, I kind of found myself. Playing in the Yum Center, you you're all over the place. There's 24,000 people who're screaming, or whatever. So um, that's really kind of calmed me and grounded me and keep me in the same, um, in the keep my, be where my feet are, but also understanding that that intense focus. All right, Joe, wrap it up, Paul, please. And Joe G. Kesley kind of done and uh, took a season high 16 free throw attempts tonight. Is that a matter of you consciously forcing the action to get to the line that way? Yeah, I mean, the first half I shot, I couldn't make a shot to save my damn life. So. Um, just trying to find ways to imp- impact the game um, and just continuously get into the free throw line, trying to force the issue. Um, Giannis had five uh, fouls. You know, Brooke Lopez had, f- or, no, he didn't have five fouls. He had four fouls, excuse me. So trying to attack attack him because he doesn't want to foul, obviously, trying to get into the paint, um, making Drew have to continue to chase me into the paint. And when they do help, kicking it. But just trying to force the issue and force myself into that into the game um, without having to just shoot it. You know, every time because I wasn't making shots, and that's just part of, you know, trying to find different ways to impact the game and, and on the offensive end. Okay. Thank right. you. Thanks. Thanks.